Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm excited about today because I wasn't really sure about this lesson. I was like, oh, I don't know much about this, but you know, it was laid on my heart to study this and to give you guys a lesson on it. Uh, like I said, uh, my last lesson, uh, last Sunday we sang a song called House of Prayer, and one of the parts of the song was May the fire on my altar never burn out. And it just hit my spirit, and I, I didn't really understand why. I knew it was important, but I didn't understand why. And I felt I was supposed to study it and prepare a lesson for it. So I came together, came to a lesson, and it's called Keep Your Fire Burning, or Keep Your Altar Burning. And um, I started off with what's an altar exactly, you know? In the Old Testament, people came to an altar to make sacrifices to God. It was it was just a place of sacrifice. And nowadays it's a place to consecrate communion and keep it pure for God. And if you take it a step further, it is a place of interaction between God and man. Um, when people sacrifice at an altar, God was able to communicate with them. One example will be in Genesis 8, 20 through 21, where Noah built an altar and God promised him that he would never again destroy all mankind with a flood. And, you know, it was an exchange, communication, and influence. And another example is in Genesis 12, 7, where um, Abraham built an altar and communicated with God. Another thing that an altar is, is the place of life. Um, our altar wasn't, it was to honor God, but at the same time it wasn't so like he would live or, you know, some of the things that other people, like with different religions, would, would you know, feed their gods or whatever. And God didn't need that. It was more for the people keep the people alive. In Exodus 20 through 21, it said if they didn't wash their hands and feet before they met with God, they would die. Because God can't be around sin. Anything sinful will die in, in God's glory and majesty. So they had to go through all these rituals and all these sacrifices at the altar in order to spend time with God. Now, it's like, how does that apply to us? We don't die when we spend time with God. We don't have to do all these things. We don't have to sacrifice animals. We don't have to to do any of that. So why does this apply to us? What, what does an altar have to do with us? So that's basically the main meat and potatoes of today's lesson is what does an altar have to do with us? And um, I'm going to read a little bit of scripture here. We're going to go to Hebrews 13, 10 through 18. And it says this We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle do not have a right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the most holy place by the high priest as a sin offering are burned outside of the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside of the gate so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood let us then go to him outside of the camp bearing his disgrace for we do not have an enduring city here instead we seek the one to come therefore through him let us continually offer up to god a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips that confess his name do not neglect to do what is good and to share for god and to share for God is pleased with such sacrifices obey your leaders and submit to them for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account so that they can do this with joy and not grief for that would be unprofitable for you pray for us for we are convinced that we have a clear conscience wanting to conduct ourselves honorably in everything so what's all that mean that seems like just a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo right well well, the first thing I think is important about that is um, that it says, Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify 
the people by his own blood. And to me, that, that means the cross is an altar. Um, it's a holy place. It, it's, it's where he sanctified us so that we can have a relationship with God. And Jesus was that sacrifice. He's the one who started that fire on the cross. And so that's the first important part of this passage. And then the next part is, you know, he was outside of the gate and they're talking about the gate of heaven Jesus was outside the gate of heaven he sacrificed himself outside the gate so that we can have a relationship with God and then when that time comes meet him inside the gate and see our father face to face so it says let us then go to him outside the camp bearing his disgrace meaning while we're on this earth outside of the gates of heaven we are to live for God live a life of sacrifice because we're just outside the gate and Jesus, when he was outside the gate, he sacrificed his life. So when we're outside the gate, we have to make our own sacrifices to keep that fire on the altar burning. So how exactly do we do that? We have to do we have to have sacrifices that are pleasing to God. And in this chapter, it gives us the exact things that we should be doing. First, bearing the disgrace of Jesus. That means when we get persecuted for living for God, we're sacrificing at the altar, at the cross. And the next thing is the sacrifice of praise. It says, continually offer up to God the sacrifice of praise. That is, the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Do not neglect what is good and to share. For God is pleased with sacrifices. The sacrifices he wants is actually not that much to ask. You know, praising him. Keeping his name on our lips. You know, doing good. Just stepping outside, smiling at people. Doing good, showing love and sharing. Not being selfish and being a selfless people. And it says he is pleased with such sacrifices. So we can please our Father simply by doing good, praising his name and sharing and being selfless. The next part is obey your leaders and submit to them. That's something a lot of people will want to do, you know. We, we want to do our own thing, you know. But when the pastor is, the pastor is there for a reason. God put, us, put the pastor there to shepherd us and to give us guidance and to protect our souls. And trust me, they will be held accountable to it. So if they're not doing their job, when that judgment day comes, they'll read what they sell, you know. So it's not our place to determine these things. Our place is to obey our leaders that are shepherding us as in the fa as in, as the Father intended for them to do. And it says do this with joy and not grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Because I mean if the pastor is teaching you or whatever leader is in is is guiding you, if they're if they're grief grieve because you know people are complaining people are mumbling they're not gonna have that joy to teach you and then both of you suffer so I mean when we obey our leaders whether it's our praise leader our our pastor or whoever it it, it benefits both you know because they're joyful and they get to teach us with a joyful heart and then we're joyful and get to receive that teaching and get to receive that feeling of the Holy Spirit so it's a win-win um, I think it's in 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy, one of the Timothys. And it says, you know, when you use your gift, it saves others and you. So when the leaders are doing their job, it's saving us and themselves. And that's something we should remember when we're listening to them and when we're engaged with them. And then the last thing is pray. Prayer is our connection with God. It is, it is that. It is the reason Jesus sacrificed Himself on the cross, so we could have a relationship with God until we get to that eternity. So, that altar of the cross and the sacrifice of Jesus is like in the Old Testament when the people had to do all their rituals in order to speak with God. Yeah. Jesus already did those, so we could speak with God. So use it pray ask god you know what he wants from you what he wants you to do in this world and at the same time thank him for everything and and thank him for your days your blessings and whatever you can think of waking up in the morning breathing talking seeing hearing 
whatever God has blessed you with, the gifts you have, thank him for it. I, I thank God that he gave me the gift of teaching, you know, because seeing people grow and learn and the excitement that people get when things click, even when I'm, when I click, like when I did this lesson last night, I was so excited I could barely get to sleep. Like the power behind Hebrews 13, 10 through 18 is, is amazing to me, you know, the sig significance of the cross as the altar, sanctifying Jesus' sacrifice, you know, or Jesus sac sanctifying his own sacrifice so that we can have a relationship with God. And the fact that it says, you know, we are outside the gate, it helps bring to reality that this earth is not our final destination. We're just outside of the gate. We're just doing sacrifices, bringing people to the Lord through Jesus Christ. Nothing we do is on our own. And we're outside of the gate. We still have so much more to look forward to. We have heaven. We have a personal face-to-face -face relationship with God. We'll be walking past the angels and, you know, just sitting with God. And we'll know a love that we've never felt before because God is love. And even though we experience some of it here on earth, we still are in our flesh. We still deal with fleshly things and things of this world. So having that unfiltered love will be amazing. So basically that's our lesson, you know. How do we keep the fire on our altar going? Because that song said, may the fire in our altar never burn out. And, you know, you think about it. What what fuels a fire in, in a fireplace? So whether it be a wooden one or a gas-powered one, a fireplace needs fuel to keep the fire going. And it was the same with altars, you know, sacrifices of the animals or the incense that kept the, the fire going. And Jesus started that fire when he died on the cross for us. That And that was the altar, you know, the cross was the altar and Jesus died on that cross. And we keep that fire going by offering up our daily sacrifices, our sacrifices of prayer and praise and a good behavior and a good attitude. And that's basically it. That's the summary of the lesson I have. And I thank you for joining me and hopefully you'll join me again. Thank you and have a great day. God bless.